You guys need to, you need to move forward, man. With what? I don't know, bro. Because, I mean, Greenwood don't go. Hit Marshall out. don't go. Linga they go. Cavani won't go. Hit yeah, it's super. No, no, this is a team that's actually coming up. So, yeah, I've come, wrapped up. So, the dust has settled. Silva, so, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling like Octopus Paul at the moment because I got most of my predictions correctly. Highest goal scorer of the tournament in the bag. Uh -huh. um, Dark Horse uh -huh. in the bag. Why was this in the they, bag? They went to the third place. Okay, you know, fair enough. No, I'll give you that. I'll give Burkina Faso their pros for that. And then, okay, my third this thing was maybe Cameroon, but they. I mean, they so you're hardly Octopus Paul. You're like. Like he flipped a coin and he landed right on a couple of things. No, no, but no, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed the hell out of this tournament. Like, like I said a couple of episodes back, this is football at its finest and we saw it all. It was very interesting. Even up until the final, do you see when Victor Gomez handed, he gave Salah Bro. his whistle and, Bro. and card. He said, Shay, you want to ref? You want to ref? Oh yeah, take. <laughs> take and ref. It was interesting Every throughout. Every game you watch in that It was court, interesting throughout. There was a possibility was you see something you've never seen in a football match. Remember so, that referee that left the game because he was tired. Exactly. We saw a referee leaving matches because they were tired. We saw Pushkash no mini goals. We saw goalkeepers yeah, making yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw, yeah, yeah. We saw everything. I think the only thing that we didn't really see was the crazy hairstyles that we used to get from previous happening. Actually, yes. Nobody really came out Kill, with Kill picture of Bansi. Yeah, exactly. Crazy hairstyles. <laughs> But I say the street's legend for that hairstyle. But yeah, um, Afghan's over. Mane versus Salah, the Liverpool derby as I called it. Mane came out on top. How are you feeling about that? I think it was very, very big for Senegal. But I think the biggest winner at the end of the day, Senegal, very big winners, but the biggest winner, as you see, see the manager of Senegal. I Shut think up, that is the best manager, hands down, on the continent. He was appointed in 2015. That the three times Senegal have reached AFCON finals, First time he was a player, the last two times he was, you know, he, he was manager of the team. This guy, you so know. Yeah, that's a bona fide Senegalese legend who just guy. himself now in bad the history guy. books. But I want to talk about Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane puts his country on his back in a way that we don't see often. And that's even, take the football aside. Mm. What Sadio Mane does in Senegal, I don't know if there's any African player that deserves this more than Sadio Mane for his country. He's he an icon. Because he's built, he's an icon. he wrote, he's built. Every time Liverpool played big matches, he sent jerseys in the tons. He flew fans out for the semi-final, flew some more fans out for the final. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so to perform like that, win man of the match in the final, he missed the penalty. But um, yeah, Sadio Mane, I think now he's like, he's a bona fide African legend. Like, I, I think he can he talk is. to the big boys. Uh, no, I think he is. I think he is. And he wasn't just man of the match of the tournament. He was actually the player of the tournament. He player of the whole, he won Oof. player of the entire tournament. So, Sadio Mane, he's, he's in his has bag. Gone up. So he yeah, as a Liverpool fan, I'm And pleased. through all of this, through all of this, he's always humble. There's a video where he was doing like a photo shoot and then once somebody behind was gassing him, he said, the person said, ah, the king. <laughs> he was like, no like, bro, you've seen Mane, I'm not the king. I've seen Mane help the boss boys at Liverpool carry no, no, water. He's a correct out. guy, he's a correct guy. Is, and as soon as the match was over, I went to meet his bro Salah that like, yeah, I was in, I hate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it was sad for him. So yeah, um, Afcon is over, um, Liverpool are going to get a motivated Salah and a confident Sadio Mane. It's not, everything is not about Liverpool. No. It is not about okay. Liverpool. Do you know what? Do you know what? Now, you're going, you made me say it. Do you not believe that the Liverpool influence on this final is part of why it was so global? You think if the best player in the world was not playing in this final, it would have been this global? Do you know the reason why I'm not As actually... an African, as in separate from my Liverpool bias, mm -hmm. I think... What they've done is great for African football. You like, AFCON was the most trending thing. Everywhere you went, British so report, this is the thing. Sadio Mane, this is the thing. Mosala. You would never hear me follow that, you know, agree to that argument because the disrespect for the tournament is already more than enough for you to now say that because of the association of African Cup of Nations to a European club is the reason why it's not it the gained European, the kind of no, traction no, no, that a, it gained. No, no, no. It's not because of the European club. It's because the players are special. Mm -hmm. If they played for Real Madrid, if they played for... If they played for Eimba and they were the best players in the world, it will have this effect on AFCON. It so will. the fact of the matter is, the best players in the world, so one of the most highest training players in the world, it they will. In the but you'll never hear me agree to that because... Liverpool. I said you and I differ. Like, I am a football man and I can speak without bias. So I'm a tennis man. Uh -huh, <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys like to rally back and forth. 1v1. 
Yo, but then I think it was it was a wonderful tournament at the end of the day. I saw a thread on Twitter about some of the funniest moments of the tournament. I was just laughing. We'll probably say we'll probably put a link to that tweet in the comment section or something in the description. Um, Amazing stuff. Speaking of happen. content or social media at the moment, did you see the Senegal parade? Yo, that is tr a hero's welcome, honestly. He, an actual hero's welcome. The crowd was I'm so happy for them that COVID didn't, there were any restrictions. Even if there were restrictions, I don't know, they didn't really care about those restrictions. Yo. Like, they were out here, the bus going through, hopefully that can come up on the screen about now. Bus going through, a sea of people. The, the all, was, was football crazy. is different, man. Football crazy. unites crazy. nations like... It was crazy. Like stuff we've never seen before. So yeah, that's AFCON. Um, but that's not all this year in terms of African football. The World Cup playoffs take place in a couple of yes. months. Yes. And we have some yes. tasty pictures yes. there as well. Yes. Nigeria against Ghana. A rerun of the AFCON final. Um, but yeah, these pictures are two legs and yeah, they start in March, I believe. I think yeah. They start in March. So yeah, keep an eye on that. And obviously we got you guys with the info coverage and all the good stuff. I think it would be amazing to see Senegal versus Egypt replay. Mm -hmm. Egypt will be, they have blood in their mouth. They have blood in their mouth. But the fact that matter is Senegal, so Senegal is a bad team. Egypt are just so, so defensive and I they try to grind it out. Like Egypt so. went to extra time all their knockout games. And it's really much like football one, man. Yeah, I think, I think Senegal actually take that one. Yeah, Senegal might do them again. But yeah, you guys predict it here. But I'm sure we'll do some more predictions closer to time. So yeah, so that's African football in England. It's been a dry couple of days. The yeah. international break, there's been some transfers. Exactly. So with news in football, generally, we usually see a downturn in things to talk about when, you know, there's international break. But there was the FA Cup, though, that happened. A few games happened and these guys are now out of the FA Cup, chilling, watching at home with Arsenal and Co. How do you feel about that? So I think that the, the squad actually seemed to be, they, they're on the right path. Do you get me? What we control. No, calm down. We, man, you was, were very unlucky in that game and you cannot even deny it. Why? Ball hit bar twice. You missed penalty. How much more unlucky do you want no, to be? No, okay. Ronaldo Are missed penalty. Are you talking about penalty. that Greenwood chance? That boy bar that the keeper was all the way there and then hit the bar. Fernandez no. also hit the bar. No, that, yes, Fernandez, the post was empty, bro. Fernandez hit the bar, the Ronaldo was hit empty. the bar. The post was empty, and Fernandez hit the bar. Yeah, but that's, that's besides the point. The point is, somebody's, the team side. was just unlucky. Many, we had so many chances, created so many chances. See, whatever you want to say, you can be, you, you can be a hitter or, you know, all you want. Chances but, you create. But this is what I'm saying, right? I can see the progress in the squad and in, in the game that we're playing, right? There's more control, there's more fluidity, there seems to be more intent on, on uh, vertical football rather than horizontal football, do you get me? So I think that that's um, interesting for me to see and it is um, encouraging, do you understand? As a Manchester United fan, I'm looking forward to, you know, things coming together and I'm hearing that Ralph Rangnick has um, included goal scoring training into the into the regime because you Ronaldo cannot continue creating doing, all these chances and be missing. To teach you guys how to score goals now. You know Ronaldo can't score goals again. Ronaldo, what do you think about that Ronaldo signing? So the thing is, it was it was not really needed. You already confessed that you're a biased guy. No, so no, 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 no. A pinch of salt. no, no, no. I'll tell you, I'll tell you facts, right? It was not really needed. But you cannot see Ronaldo playing for Manchester. I can't stand by. Man, you went to beg sponsors for money to make that transfer happen, and I stand by it. Woodward went and was knocking on their door, please give us advance, please give us advance, to make sure that that transfer happened. And I think, good, if Ronaldo was playing for Guardiola, I will stop watching football. Honest, for the good of the Premier League, it's good he's not on that play. I will stop. And I will not watch it again. Me, I'm biased on this one. Watching Cristiano Ronaldo flop at Manchester United. And you're stop, happy. It's stuff of dreams, bro. Why? I'm a Messi guy and I'm a Why? Liverpool guy. So, Why? United and Ronaldo declining at the same time. What an unfortunate oh mixture. You're a Liverpool fan and then you still hate uh -huh. Messi. And you still like Messi. <laughs> Why not? Talking about What's that, like Messi this? scored the second goal for PSG. Yeah, Messi is down bad at the moment. In a 5-1 win. And that's your GO8. The thing is, we, we've already finished football. Your GO8 that I was supposed to use for ECU. We finished football. We finished football. <laughs> your GO8 that I was supposed to use for ECU. <laughs> No, but like you guys game. asked us to deliver the international trophy. Mm. We delivered the international trophy. And like all South Americans, before I put up now, you guys. we've won what? Is that is it seven ballon d'ors or six? He said we. He is he you? Yeah. Did you win ballon d'or? He's a male. If you have to win champions, you're going to say we. Messi is a team. Ronaldo is a team. Anyhow, yeah. Yeah, anyhow. But I think I think that Ronaldo in Manchester United, he's not firing as much as people expected. But I think 
that the expectations were far too high. I think because Ronaldo can Ronaldo. help you. Ronaldo can help in a team like City where the place the the pieces are already in place and yeah, Ronaldo finish up the job, we create the chances. But in a team like Manchester United where <laughs> you need to graft. Like you guys give every single team you play a solid game. Mm. So if you have a striker that's not getting in behind, he's not occupying the centre back, he can't pass, the ball is not sticking with him. You're in trouble. He scored one no penalty goal since Rangnick appeared. But no matter what you say, no matter what you say, I don't think Ronaldo is as bad as you're as you're thinking. Out I think he's done, this bro. guy is 37 years old. He's done. Saying he's done is not even a bad thing. Okay, yeah. As in, he say he's done. Okay. I didn't say it's a bad thing. 37 but years of age. He's done. Okay. He's done, bro. And it, I okay? think the club you guys need to you need to move forward, man. With what? I don't know, bro. Cause I mean, Greenwood don't go, Martial don't go, Lingard they go, Cavani won't go. Yeah, it's super. No, no, this is a team that's actually coming up. To be very honest with you, this is a team that's coming up. Things are coming together. Uh, Ralph Rangnick seems to seems to know what he's doing. I'm just looking forward to the next manager. I hope if they don't sign Rangnick to a permanent tra- a permanent uh, you deal, don't? I hope they do. Mm. But if they do not, I hope they get Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, if not Eric Ten Hag, nobody else. I don't even want Poch. Keep Poch far away from me and my team. Ten Hag, Rangnick, or nobody. I think the problems at Manchester United are even further up than the manager. So if you bring anybody you bring in there, as long as those yeah, structures are still in place, Structurally, there's a lot of success, man. But I, I'm stuff. just hoping that United do their 10 years, no trophy, no Premier League at least, and then I'm good with that. No, I'm just a hitter. Boost, I'm a hitter, I'm a hitter. I'm a hitter. yeah, see hitter. me, hitter. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Um, so yeah, there was an update on the um, Greenwood situation that we guys yes. talked guys about. Yes, Greenwood has been dropped by Nike mm. and pff, we, we all saw it coming. Everybody has dropped it. FIFA dropped him from the game. Exactly. Pers dropped him from their game. E-Football also dropped him from their game. So United are taking in his jersey, swapping them for other players. Jersey. Precisely. So it's Manchester United bad. sent out messages to fans who bought uh, Manchester United jerseys with Greenwood uh, uh, with the Greenwood uh, name on it, and they told them, "You, you guy, bring your jersey, replace it for another one free." So I personally of think I think I won't be surprised if I I never see Greenwood in Greenwood again. Maybe I'll see maybe in some court hearings and all that, but might, I think he might fall off. Like fall off the radar. Right? Yeah, he just just not fall off the radar. Mm-hmm. I think I, just, I think I think he. It's he almost like he passed. He learned, I, I hope he learns from this. He, he reminds me of another match. You think he can get another star, chance of football? Another match that a young star who wasted his talent, Ravel Morrison. But Morrison so many, didn't do this. No, didn't do this. But youthful exuberance. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that's exactly what it mm-hmm. was with Greenwood, but then mm-hmm. you know, similar. Ravel Morrison was a yeah, certified talent, 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 you know, talent for sure. in, in, in the build up to you know to the, to the senior team, young star, banging in all those goals, winning the Milk Cup and all mm-hmm. of those things. But he, he wasted his chance, and I think Greenwood is on that same on that same trajectory. Um, yeah, still I, I don't, trajectory. Yeah, 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 don't come to the end. Yeah, I think it's Yeah, but but let's not be the judge. Let's let's see what happens with the with the, with the court and ruling at the end of the day, and uh, and we'll see what what what, what happens. Yeah, he might maybe in the court. Official court, right, but in the court of public mm. opinion. Yes, in court of public opinion. I think it's and it's a club like Manchester United, you guys are PR United. All you need is PR. This sounds coming. This sounds coming. You will do that one. <laughs> Let us touch on England. Uh, the UK actually trying to put in a bid to host the World Cup. Right? What do you think about that? And it's not just England. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, all of them host World Cup together. I, mean, I find that exciting. Obviously, um, we are Premier League fans, so mm-hmm. we have the affiliation to English football. So yeah, it will feel perhaps even closer to home to be in stadiums we all recognize mm-hmm. and all that. But I'm interested in how they want to do it across different countries. Like some of the, st- the main stadiums in England are already so far apart, right? Like, so if you use Old Trafford and then use Emirates, Wembley. that's a trip in, yeah, Wembley, that's a trip in itself. To so now yeah. include trips to Ireland yeah. and Wales, it could get tricky, but yeah, it'll be exciting for the English people for sure. I think the infrastructure is already there, like the infrastructure is there. And you know the what? culture is there. I have Everything a conspiracy, I feel like England might get it because football is in a bad place because of this Qatar World Cup, mm. because of all the um, human rights in yes, Qatar. Yes, 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 Like issues. David Beckham is in trouble for taking sponsorship from them, blah, mm. blah, blah. Mm. So yeah, doing it in England is nice and safe. And yeah, it just, it, just sort of, it, just, it just feels like a reset. Yeah, like just, just reset. refreshes yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Let's get back to basics. Yeah. These are the guys that invented football. Yeah. Let's yeah. try and move on. I think the only issue would just be the logistical nightmare, moving, yeah. from, moving from place to place. The distances are just... The distances are just... Quite, I think in... That might be the Euros were across a couple countries. I'm not sure yes, what the actual yes, exactly. geography distances and all that, but 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out if they do get the bid. So they are trying to put in a bid for Euro 2028 and they also say they will submit a proposal for World Cup 2030. Let's see how that one passes. It's possible. We saw an Olympic Games in England not too long ago. So we know structurally, it yes, works, infrastructure, and logistically, everything, yeah. everything works. Yeah. And like trying to do all those things. Yeah, but now we have too much. So wrap it up there. Um, thanks for rocking with me again as usual. Thanks to you guys. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Um, I think we're about to hit, we should be nearing episode 10. The next episode might be episode 10. Yeah. So yeah, if you've been with us for 10 episodes, shout out to you. This is your first episode, Thanks for shout all out the to you. Um, all the views, all the comments, we see them. So we'll catch you before the weekend, give you a rundown of the weekend's pictures, give you our predictions, give us yours as well. Don't stop giving us your predictions. Yep. We love reading them. Yep. All right, peace out. My sign out. <laughs> catch you there.